Oprah Winfrey is North America's first black billionaire and is considered by many to be the most influential woman in the world. She went from being born into poverty in rural Mississippi to a teenage single mother to now being worth $2.6 billion. And today we're gonna learn her best advice on how you can really listen. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I bring you a shot of Espresso to help you believe in yourself more and start your day with confidence. So good morning, I believe in you, and let's do this. Over to you, Oprah Winfrey. One of the things I started to get uh, around mid to late, no, late, mid to late 90s, is that everybody that I had on the show at the end of the show would say something to me like, um, was that okay? Was that okay? How was that? Was that okay? Right. At the end of the interview. And I started to then track it. It didn't matter if it was, um, I, 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 I had gone and done a show where I was in um, a prison and I was interviewing a father who was in jail for life for murdering his twin daughters. And at the end of the interview, even behind bars, he said to me, is that okay? How'd I do? And Barack Obama said it when he sat in the chair the first time. And George Bush said it. Beyonce said it at the end of her, after she taught me how to twerk and then said, is that okay? Right, right, right. <laughs> So that's an acquired skill, do you think? Right? Yes, the working thing. But this is what I learned uh, sitting in that chair for 25 years. That at the end of the day, whether you are interviewing me or I get to interview you, whatever your profession is, wherever you are in your life, in your relationships, every person that you encounter, every experience, the person wants to know, was that OK? Was that okay? And what I started to hear was that what people are really saying is, did you hear me? Did you hear me? And did what I say mean anything right. to you? And so I started to listen with that in mind, with that intention of validating that your being here, your speaking to me, your taking the time to do this with me is important because you matter. And that's true for everybody who's watching or listening, that every argument that you ever have, every encounter, the person just wants to know, did you hear me? Did you see me? And did I say anything that mattered? Everything that you want out of life is on the other side of learning how to listen to people. They will tell you exactly what's on their mind and exactly what they need. And if you can help them get what they need, they will bend over backwards to help you get the success that you're after too. I think this is one of the strengths that introverts have. Introverts, I think, are good listeners. We're not big talkers. Uh, I don't like being the center of attention. I'd rather listen, ask questions, and, and I pay attention. I'm, I'm, I care about the person in front of me and what's on their mind, and I'm, I'm looking for ways to help them by default. Like when you're going into a situation with somebody either face-to-face -face or somebody that you wanna build a relationship with, going in with how can I serve this person and help them get what they want before what can I ask from them because I know they can help me, shifts the conversation, shifts the intent, and will often shift the results. You'll get way better results doing this method. So one of the things I'm great at is trying to figure out how to help them. Uh, I was at an event in California and Charlie Hooper from Charisma on Command, I met for the first time there and I asked him, what is he working on? What is he trying to learn? And he said he was, well, I'm not gonna say exactly what he's working on because maybe it's confidential, but by learning what he wanted, I introduced him to some other people who I knew there who could give him what he wanted. And then he made a video on me on his channel about charisma, which I don't think I'm super charismatic, especially in networking events because I hate networking. And he, he made a video saying I'm a master networker. Like, how am I a master networker? But that's really what it was. I'm, I'm listening to people. I'm not promoting myself. I'm listening to them. I'm understanding what they care about. And then I'm trying to remember, is there anybody else here or anybody else I know who could be a good fit for this person because they have complementary skill sets. And so then I say, hey, you need to go meet this person. And I go introduce them. And I feel like, okay, I helped that person, but to them, they made, that's a meaningful, a super deep, meaningful connection where most people are just going, what's in it for me? You're actually thinking about serving and helping them. Now, I actually suck at doing this on an ongoing basis. And so I had to create a system for myself. 
because I don't naturally think about all the people that I'm supposed to stay in touch with. That actually stresses me out. How many people have I met at different events? How many high caliber people who I've helped that if they are just thinking about me on an ongoing basis could impact my business? Think about yourself too. How many people who could help grow your business, could help you accomplish your goals, who already know a little bit about you just on the periphery, but you're not seen in touch with people. You're not seen in touch with these contacts, with these clients, with these, these people in the media. You're not seen in touch with them consistently. And so what I had to do was I created an Evernote and I made a list of everybody uh, who I wanna stay in touch with and, and make an effort to stay in touch with and then how I stay in touch with them, whether it's email or, or uh, messenger or however I'm, I'm in touch with them. And then the last time that I connected with them for something where I helped them, when I'm not asking for something, but I helped them. Right? Maybe I mentioned them in a story on Instagram, right? And it only counts if they've seen it and they responded with like a heart or thank you. If I just mentioned it but they didn't see it, it doesn't count as a point. And I keep track of the last time. Now I've got, I started with about 30 people, now I'm maybe up to 60 people in that list. And I'm looking for ways to at least once a quarter stay in touch with them by giving them some kind of value. And sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes I'm reading their book. And so it's easy to do a shout out for them. Sometimes there's something so obvious on their YouTube channel that it's easy to stay in touch with them and send them some value. Others, three months go by and haven't done anything. Like, oh man, I totally forgot about that person. I don't even know what they're up to. And so I go to their Instagram and I go to their YouTube and I go to their Twitter and I see what they're posting. I see what they care about. And I'm actively spending time trying to give them some kind of value based off of what they care about right now. And so for me, it's about 60 people right now, but these are 60 high influence people that started with 30 and, and built up that if they're thinking about me regularly, it leads to good things for me. And I'm not asking for anything. I'm just giving them value constantly. And then people make introductions to me. Hey, you need, you need to talk to Evan about this. He can help that. You need a speaker. You should talk to Evan. Hey, Evan, don't you have a new book out, right? People want to, to help back. Think about the people who've helped you. When somebody helps you out, you're looking for ways to help back. And so be in the help giving business and you're almost forcing people to want to help back. You're not expecting it. Don't, don't uh, get angry if you don't get it back, especially right away, but it will happen. If you are constantly providing value, not what you think is value, but actually value to them and keeping track of your list and saying no more than three months can go by without these people getting an awesome piece of value from me your life, your business, your goals will explode. So how do you do it? I'm gonna give you three tactical steps. But before that, if you wanna to learn to have more confidence, check out my 254 series, it's free. The link to join is in the description below. Your number one job is to become more of yourself. They think that success is supposed to happen like that. that. Become so skilled, so vigilant, so flat out fantastic at what you do, that your talent cannot be dismissed. Okay, how do we do it? How do we win? How do we listen? How do we use that to build our business and hit our goals? Three steps, let's go. Step number one is be their chief goal officer. So whoever you're dealing with, and this is not just people who are contacts, it could be relationships, it could be people on your team, it could be friends, but especially for people who you're trying to build a relationship with, whether you know them already or you're just trying to learn about them through social media, you're their chief goal officer. You need to understand what is their most important goal right now and then help them get it, even if it's not what you do. The good news is people are more and more and more open than they ever were. People are sharing so much on social media, right? I'm not, I'm not a big talker on social. I don't share a lot of my private life on social media. It's funny to say because I have you know, like six videos a day, three posts a day on Instagram. It's like the amount of content we put up is crazy. But you don't know anything about my parents. There's a lot of things in my life that you don't know. Um, and so that's very private. But most people share tons of stuff publicly. They share what they're up to. They share what they're worried about. They share what their goals are. Just pay attention. See where that person is most actively involved themselves and then understand what their most important goal is because that's gonna give you your pathway to get to know them and give them value. Step number two is help them get it, right? When you know what their goal is, go help them get it, even if it's not what you do. So as an example, there's a big YouTuber who's got millions of subscribers who 
you know, I met recently and I'm, I'm building a relationship with, and we're already friendly and I already go back and forth and giving him advice, but I wanna be his chief goal officer, right? I wanna understand what do you care about? What are you trying to do right now? What are your most important goals? And he's trying to get a, a list of 10 to 15 people on his show, right? He's trying to get these people's interviews on his show. Some people I actually know personally, and some people I don't. But in my head, I'm immediately thinking, how can I make an introduction to this person so that, so that they can both connect to each other and I'm the guy who facilitated that. And the other people who I don't know, do I know anybody who knows those people through my agent, through my book agent, through my contacts, that might be a potential path for him to get that interview. Because if he gets that really difficult interview and I'm the guy who made the introduction for him, he remembers that, right? And at some point that's gonna come back, whether through him or through somebody else. If, if what you're doing is helping people accomplish their goals, even if you don't know how to do the thing yourself, right? His goal list is not to interview me. That's easy, <laughs> right? I'm not big enough. Uh, if it was to interview me, that's an easy yes. No, it's to interview these other people. So how can I help him get those people? If I'm doing that consistently, this is what I do. I want you to do it. If you're doing that consistently, many, many, many good things will happen for you in your life and your business. And then step number three, stay in touch with them. This is where a lot of people break down. This is my, my, this was my biggest weakness that I had to create a system around is that at an event itself, go to that California event. That's all I'm doing is trying to connect people and bring value to everybody. But afterwards, I don't even remember them. Afterwards, I'm back into focused on making videos for you guys and making my next piece of content and what's in front of me right now. I'm not thinking, ha, oh, that person that I met three months ago, I haven't sent them anything yet. I am not thinking backwards like that at all. So create a system. For me, it's Evernote and it just make a list, again, who they are, the last time I, caught, I talked to them and gave them value, not asking for something, and then how I get in touch with them. And if it's past three months, then I force myself to find a way to give value to these people. So create a system for yourself. It, it could be a, a notepad, it could be a Word document, an email, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Don't go off setting some complex CRM all set up for your top 30 people, right? Don't create a system that's way too big for what you need, but have some kind of follow-up so that you are in touch with these people. Because again, if these 30 people in your life, 50 people in your life that can move your business forward, are constantly thinking about you consistently, not every day, but they're thinking about you, great things are gonna happen for you. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that question of the day, I wanna know what's one thing you're gonna do for a key contact of yours? I don't need to know who that person is, but what's one thing that you're gonna do today, right after watching this video, to bring value to them without even asking anything in return, just to bring value to them. What's that one thing? Let me know, put it down in the comments below. And if you made it this far in the video, I wanna celebrate you. Believe Nation, we don't just watch videos, we do something about it. So if that's you and you commit, you promise to take action, give me a hashtag Believe down in the comments as well. And also tell me where you're from. Show some local pride, I wanna celebrate you. Nelson Mandela is a particularly special case study in the leadership world because he is universally regarded as a great leader. You can take other personalities and depending on the nation you go to, we have different opinions about other personalities, but Nelson Mandela across the world is universally regarded as a great leader. He was actually the son of a tribal chief and he was asked one day, how did you learn to be a great leader? And he responded that he would go with his father to tribal meetings and he remembers two things when his father would meet with other elders. One, they would always sit in a circle. And two, his father was always the last to speak. You will be told your whole life that you need to learn to listen. I would say that you need to learn to be the last to speak. I see it in boardrooms every day of the week. Even people who consider themselves good leaders, who may actually be decent leaders, will walk into a room and say, here's the problem, here's what I think, but I'm interested in your opinion, let's go around the room. It's too late. The skill to hold your opinions to yourself until everyone has spoken does two things. One, it gives everybody else the feeling that they have been heard. It gives everyone else the ability to feel that they have contributed. And two, you get the benefit of hearing what everybody else has to think before you render your opinion. The skill is really to keep your opinions to yourself. If you agree with somebody, don't nod yes. If you disagree with somebody, don't nod no. 
Simply sit there, take it all in, and the only thing you're allowed to do is ask questions so that you can understand what they mean and why they have the opinion that they have. You must understand from where they are speaking, why they have the opinion they have, not just what they are saying. And at the end, you will get your turn. It sounds easy, it's not. Practice being the last to speak. That's what Nelson Mandela did. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.